Hello everyone, Joe Davis with Park City Television. I could not be more proud than to get to spend a few minutes with Conrad Anker. Conrad, thank you so much for spending some time with me. Well, Joe, thanks for uh, asking me to be on your show. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to talk a little bit about the film that we're going to be looking at tonight. And uh, start off by just giving me a little history of it. Last year in August, after the Outdoor Retailer Trade Show, we went up to Glacier National Park with a group of veterans and Jim Baylog with the Extreme Ice Survey. And what we were doing on this expedition was to document the glaciers, where they are, and sort of observe climate change. And that was sort of the, the overarching goal that we wanted to do. Right. But what we really found out was, working with the vets here, that going out in the wilderness, doing an expedition is a really great way to connect with fellow veterans and use the same skills that they had been taught in for their service and use it in a way that is perhaps beneficial and therapeutic for who they are. You know, as a veteran, I'm so excited about this because I've met a few other veterans tonight, some that have uh, done some amazing things, some Army Rangers and some other uh, elite combat forces. And truly, there is no question they have some of the skills, some of the Conrad Anchor skills even. And getting out in the outdoors is a great way for them also to get a little bit of a relief from you know the other outdoor activities that they've had to participate in. Yeah, certainly, and it puts their skills in the context as something that is beneficial. So when we were out last year, it was the weather, the climate, the mountain, our own fears that were the adversary. It was not other people. So we formed a little team. We had our little gang that was moving up in the mountains, and we had to be aware of bears lower down the forest, and then traveling over the glacier, crevasses were our, our danger. And on summit day, where are we gonna get an afternoon thunderstorm? So all of these adversaries required us to work together as a team, communicate our plans, and then work accordingly so that we were all sort of came through it safely. And going through that process, I think, is very beneficial for the vets. How much fun was it for you to be with gentlemen that are, that their outdoor skills are a little different. They come from a different place. Was that, it must have been kind of unique and a, a pretty exciting experience. Yeah, it was, <clears throat> the skills the, the vets had were very similar to what I use in the mountain. But what I found was that there was always, there was a better situational awareness with the vets and other people yeah. I've been with. And it's something that being in the military and, and those that uh, served in combat are much more aware of it. So they take in their entire surroundings, use all the input there to uh, focus and figure out what decisions they'll make. So it's a very, it's good to bring that trait back out in a uh, wilderness type of setting. How is the military camaraderie? That's something that we're kind of known for. We're, we always have a lot of fun with the guys. Oh yeah, if you can't give it and take it, then don't step up. So yeah, I know how to play with them. So we're like, yeah, you know, it's always good fun, so. That's terrific. So this film tonight, uh, give us a little insight about what we'll see. The um, film with the, um, the Glacier, um, expedition was um, up to the top of uh, Blackfoot Peak. And so it follows the team going up there and some of the climbers were not experienced, other climbers had previous experience. So it was great to see that interaction with them. And um, it gives you an eye into vets. And for many people, they're kind of these ghost people that we don't really know who they are in our street. And then, but yet here they are, regular people doing things that are good for humans to do, which is climbing mountains and sharing wilderness experiences. All right, that brings me to an important question. I want to, I want to get to know Conrad Anchor a little bit, a little different than we normally would get to know you. So let's start out with your childhood. I want to talk about how you got to climbing in the first place. What inspired you to climb your first mountain? My father's side of the family is from Central California, and we were close to the Sierras. So we would go out into the mountains each summer, and that would be the, a two-week trip with some donkeys and some burros and mules and a fishing rod and go out and spend time. So that was sort of the introduction to it and learning about how to take care of yourself, how to uh, plan for weather, things like that. So that was the real foundation of my outdoor skills. Excellent. And since then, uh, I want to go through all the peaks. Can you, can I, I know we can't do all, you know, plus 100 of them, but what were your favorites? What's the one that stands out to you as being the most important or the best climb you had? Well, as a little kid, we climbed Mount Dana, which is the highest point in Tuolumne County, and it's the county that my family's from. So that was sort of a jumping off point, and that's something I encourage all the vets with children to do. Those of you out there that are listening in and you have kids, take your kid up and climb a peak and hike up to the top, get to the summit, and watch their face light up when they look out across the horizon. So that very first peak was really influential. Um, and then subsequently, as I became 
as I moved up in the, in the ranks of climbing, as a young guy, climbed Denali, great experience there. And then I've been on Everest, three separate expeditions. And so those were really, um, in a literal sense, the high point that of, of my climbing career and, and also a very emotionally rich experience. All right, I have to know, what thing is Conrad Anker afraid of? Is there anything that scares you? I mean, after being up on Everest, I can't imagine there is, but there's got to be something. Well, there's always fear. And whether you're here in an urban environment or you're with hostile environment, or you, that's self-preservation instinct talking to you. So, um, but probably my greatest fear is letting people down. So I don't want to, everything I do, I'm, I have to, it, worst thing you want to do is, say, oh, I let someone down, and when they said they were going to, you're going to be there for them. So I try not to let that happen. All right. So uh, personal questions. Favorite food? Favorite food: blueberries. <laughs> uh, favorite uh, color? Favorite color would be blue to turquoise green. Somewhere I, I can move around in those colors. But I also like yellows. I like them all. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Mac or a PC? I am a Mac, but I might go to PC. I'm. You know, the, you know, things are going to change again. So, so whichever one works better. Whichever one works better, and yeah, there. I have to look at what I need to do with my work and where I'm at with it. So, favorite thing to do with your weekend would be spend time with the family, and um, uh, we every Sunday evening we have a family dinner with. We invite guests over, and we all chip in, uh, my wife and three kids to make a dinner, and that's kind of a, a good family time. Tell me the kids' names. Max is 24, Sam is 20, and Isaac is 17. Any of them following in the family business? Well, more or less. Uh, Max was up on Denali with me this June, and he's here at the Outdoor Retail Trade Show as a freelance uh, photographer and social media specialist, which when you're 24, that's what you get to do. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, you should be a specialist with that. All right, I wanted you to tell me your, just kind of give me your scariest moment. Was there a moment where you thought, okay, maybe this is it? Yeah, there's, um, I've had three instances in the mountains where a very close call, and they, they brings it down to a focus. Is this really what you want to do? And it's a, it's a trying, um, alpine climbing and what I do, Himalayan climbing, is probably the most dangerous of all the professional sports. So, If someone were looking to be like Conrad, what would you tell them? Well, don't start because you can't quit. No. <laughs> I would it's addictive. Like yeah, so, I mean, that's a good thing, but... Be true to yourself and follow what you want to do. Um, I'm fortunate that I've been able to make a career of being in the outdoors and inspiring people to, to do that. And um, probably moreover, I get out and exercise every day. And the more that you keep your body fit and healthy, and you do that in a natural outdoor environment, the healthier you are. And I think that elemental communication, that being in the outdoors, that trust, where there is no adversary that is the other human, but it's we're a team together is something that our nation is searching for in the aftermath of Sandy Hook and Trayvon and all these things, these these deep things where there's anger and we're like, let's go out in the woods and you go for a hike and... A little catharsis. Yeah, it's a good thing and it's, um, I think, something that our nation is looking for and, and that we're here and we want to help this um, be part of a, of a movement of positive things going forward. <laughs> I have two questions left for you. How do you want to be remembered? I would like to be remembered as, um, oh, that's a, <laughs> as a, um, it's a tough question. Yeah, as, you know, the son of my parents. No, well, I would be remembered as a, um, as someone that um, climbed and then was able to take that little bit of notoriety and turn it into something that um, to benefit other people. So, someone who cares for others. I wouldn't know what to say. So. <laughs> How about a favorite quote? Do you have one? A favorite quote, be good, be kind, and be happy. So if you're good and kind, then you have happiness that comes in with it. So, and so being a happy person, is there it is. <laughs> Conrad Anchor, explorer, climber, mountaineer, thank you so very much. Thank you, Joe. It's a pleasure to meet <laughs> yeah. you.